What is the meaning of our present life? Uh, do you know? Do you know what you're here for or what the purpose in your life is? That's what we've been discussing on this program for several months now. And uh, we resolve that uh, the only person that could answer that question satisfactorily would be some person who could stand back from the world and look at it from a distance. In other words, someone who had not only been on the earth, but someone who had been off the earth. And of course, we weren't speaking just about our space shots or our spacemen, but we were thinking of someone who would be able to tell us what was beyond the sky and beyond the further star. And uh, someone who could therefore tell us why the earth was put in this point in space and uh, what it was put here for, and therefore what we were put here for. And uh, though we've searched the history books and uh, studied the Buddhas and the Confucius and the Zoroasters uh, of this world, yet none of them ever claim to be able to have got off the earth and uh, looked at it from a distance. There is only one man who has done that. There's only one man who has broken the death barrier in such a convincing way that even critical historians accept that he undoubtedly did rise from the dead, and that is the man we know as Jesus of Nazareth. And so we have come to the conclusion that he certainly wasn't a lunatic because he didn't have the imbalance of lunatics. He certainly wasn't a liar because we regard him as the greatest ethical teacher the world has ever seen, and no such person could lie about the central and focal point of his whole teaching, that is, his own identity. And he certainly wasn't a legend because there was not time for a legend to develop. After he died, accounts of his life were already circulating a few years after his life ended. And so we've come to the conclusion that this man, Jesus of Nazareth, was in fact who he said he was. He was the son of the maker of our universe, and that he alone is the one who can tell us what life's about. And what he said, of course, was that what is born of the flesh is flesh. And you may say, well, big deal. That's <laughs> no wonderful news. But it is if you f combine it with the statement that he made that we would not believe that we would not believe it that's what he said they would not they will not believe and of course that is uh, too true isn't it of us we know that we're born of the flesh we know that it'll end in 70 or at the most 100 years and yet we can't somehow believe that we have deep down in us a feeling that we were made for more than that we have a feeling of eternity inside us. We have a feeling that we were made for a kind of life that is utterly different from the life that we have on this earth. And strangely enough, the life that we dream of is something like heaven, even if we don't believe in it. We feel, for instance, all of us, that we were made to have a security and a stability that this life seems not to offer us. And so, of course, what we all do is, on this moving uh, platform, this fiddler-on-the-roof kind of situation we find ourselves in, we try vainly and uh, uh, with futility to trade up our houses and our cars and trade up our education for good jobs and try to surround ourselves with a cast-iron insurance, life insurance scheme that will somehow ensure that we are secure and that we are safe from all the uncertainties of this present world. And yet we know fine well that even the greatest millionaires have not been able to protect themselves against the death by cancer or by some other disease or even the disasters that fall upon the the greatest and most efficient magnets that the business world has seen. And so there's a futility in our attempts, and yet we still keep trying to do it. We grab, grab, grab all we can to try to establish our own security. And you know how at night we lie in bed thinking of schemes to improve our position, improve our security, improve our stability. Many of us have not been able to enjoy, to enjoy our education because we have utterly subordinated it 
to the need for vocational training, and vocational training so often has meant for us not enjoying what we are able to do, but in fact trying to ensure security, financial security, and physical security for ourselves and our families. It's the same with the other characteristic that we think we were made for. We think we were made for utter happiness, complete happiness all the time. And we're always trying to be happy, happy, happy. And happiness for us is a combination of peace and serenity together with exhilaration and excitement. And that explains why many of us involve ourselves in a great deal of the sexual pursuits we have. Uh, why many of us involve ourselves in the alcohol and in the drugs. Because we're looking for tremendous excitement and exhilaration, and yet if we have too much of it, we blow ourselves apart. And so we want to combine it with peace and serenity, but somehow we never, be able to, uh, we never seem to be able to get the mix right. And however much we try to raise this created life to a level of uncreated eternity, we don't seem able to bring it about. And it's the same, of course, with the feeling we have that we were made to be somebody. We all feel that, don't we? We all feel we're unique. We all feel, but I'm unique. I'm unique. There's nobody quite like me. There's nobody quite like me. I am unique. And the strange and interesting thing is you are unique, you know. There's no one like you. There is no one absolutely like you. Even if you're identical twins, your twin is not exactly like you. You have a subtle combination of physical appearance and of mental ability and of emotional trends that the other twin doesn't have. There is nobody like you in the whole universe. And here's an amazing fact to add to that. There never has been anybody like you. There never has been. There's never been anybody exactly like you. And then add to it this other fact. There never will be anybody like you. There never will be anybody. You are actually unique. But uh, you and I, of course, say, well, yeah, I know that, I know that. But the rest don't, the rest don't. And, of course, we're always trying to get the rest to re note how remarkably unique we are. And that's uh, tough uh, going in a world with four billion people in it because they're all trying to get all the other uh, four billion to notice how unique they are. And uh, what results is a great deal of striving for position, striving for uh, importance, a great deal of self-importance, a great deal of drawing attention to ourselves in conversation, trying to be the funniest guy in the conversation, trying to be the unique, superior, know-all, and yet we know deep down we aren't, and yet we do know we're unique. And so in trying to make ourselves unique in everybody else's eyes, in trying to gain significance in everybody else's eyes, in trying to gain security and stability in this unstable world, in trying to experience continual happiness in what is a very sad world, we have often become egotistical monsters, voracious, gluttonous parasites that tend to live off everybody else trying to get ourselves the heaven that we think we were made for. Now, what Jesus said, of course, is that the trouble is we were made for that kind of heaven. That's right. Our Father did make us for that. Our Maker did make us for that. But he made it, he made us to receive that from him and not from the world itself. And Jesus began to explain that to us in detail. He said that we're always looking to the wrong source for the happiness that we feel we were made for. We're trying to get it from our dear wife. We're trying to get enough excitement in our experiences with her. We're trying to get enough peace and security in her care for us to make us utterly happy. And Jesus said, really, you'll never get it from just a created human being like yourself. You never will get it. You'll always end up in futility. In fact, you were made for that kind of life, but it'll come only from one person. And that person is the person who put you here. Let's talk a little more about this tomorrow.